Hello everybody and welcome to another third party review. In today's video, we're taking a look at the, what are we on to now, like sixth <laughs> member of the Troublemaker setup. This is sweeping. Take a quick look around the box. Of course, this is brought to you by Devil Savior. So it should just, should just be one more figure to go after this. And then we've got our full combined devastator i'm really excited for this they've got him in his leg bot and vehicle mode let's crack him open and here we have him out of his plastic prison and the attention to detail on this guy is absolutely phenomenal he looks fabulous just that dirt and grime it says gat i'll take gat i'll get <laughs> I'm going to take a great deal just to kind of peel a little bit of that G off there. Got these cannons mounted on the rear. Looks absolutely superb. And it is bigger than what I thought it was going to be as well. Now, of course, it's not Mechanical Alliance big, but it's still vastly superior to what we got from the official release. How much bigger? Let's just see. Now initially, it doesn't seem to be much uh, in it sort of cab-wise, uh, but it's just that width. I mean, just look at that. It's just that level, level of detailing and all of that dirt and grime that's included. Now, something that did strike me as a bit of an odd choice is we have uh, no wheels. No wheels on the underside, so it kind of just glides and scratches your surface as opposed to um to rolling but just look have all of that texture got your pistons got this extra uh, section of track that hides quite nicely Underneath, yeah, it says gat, but you know, I kind of think I can work with that. Got these sections here, which can come down, they're designed to be up like so. The cannons are removable and they can be turned. Now, it's not just the figure that we get in the packaging. We also get a selection of rods and clasps. Now it states in the instructions that you might need these for the bot mode uh, for more stability. And when we get him fully combined up with all of the parts, I'll show you where exactly where everything can go. But it does state quite clearly in the instructions that I don't like the idea of using rods. Uh, but we shall see. I think it's more if you designed, if you choose to have him kind of knuckled over, almost ape-like, bounding forwards. That's when you have these metal rods there as that extra security blanket. Something that strikes me as a bit odd though. I mean, are these designed to be down uh, for the majority of the time? Because it doesn't really, it won't sit where the hands and everything are underneath there. Look, uh, this won't really sit any lower. Than that, it's kind of to that angle. I'll just unplug that and then plug that back in. Um, I don't think that looks very natural. Uh, kind of looks better being up, but officially, that's part of the transformation. We're meant to have these bits up for the transformation. That's meant to be. I don't know. Maybe it's just the angle. It just, it just doesn't sit quite right with me. But anyway, to transform. Move these sections up. You want to remove these cannons. We'll come back to those later. I don't mind uh, parts forming weapons. Uh, that's actually okay with me. I've uh, got a little bit here that comes untabbed and a little bit on this side that comes untabbed. Uh, these claws here are gonna come out on both sides. And this part here Albeit it's very stiff on mine. Come on, out you come. 
this is a separate claw. Come on! Ah, gotcha! <laughs> and same on this side. Come on. I mean, it's not bad that it's a really clean fit, but I'm just super cautious because this is not a cheap figure. Uh, I don't want to be applying unnecessary force, there we go, to any of these parts. These bits come away from the front. That's going to come around like so, and that will tab in. And this will come up. And then this whole section here will come up. And where is the hinge there? It will hinge back over on itself like so. You want to do that for both sides. So again, on this side, untab this from the front. It's going to come up, around, and tab in to there. This piece comes up. That's going to come down, and then this should come down to the side like so. This part slides. As you can see here, you've got this split into thirds, so this should come in and slide. And again on this side, bring this one up, in and slide that in and in until they come all the way down so that they're nice and flat. And then we can just push that back in, securing here so everything's tabbed in. I wonder if this should have been flicked up and around like that just to get out of the way. There we go. Those are in nicely from here. We can lift up these arm panels. This piece here is going to come down. Got this small tab here. So when we bring this up, this will locate in this section just here. These roof panel pieces are going to come undone. Oh, come on, out you can. One, and two. Oh, I've got this chest piece here. Come on. You have to be careful because it does tend to kind of push itself just beyond these windows. And then it's difficult to bring back there we go this bit needs to come out like so and there is if you can see a small lip just there and that's going to go in to that small lip and tab in these are going to come down to the side and Push and just push. Cleaning off the side panels. This small section here is going to double up as a stand. So come on, come away, please. Come on. There we go. That's going to then flip around like so, and that's now part of the stand which holds this figure up ish. To counterbalance this, you need to just lift this section up 
and this is going to rock down on that hinge like this. These bits at the front here are going to come up and they're going to come up. Come on. In you go. There we go. These pieces here are going to come in and in. These panels here are going to flip out and those are going to push, tab and locate into the side of the torso, lining everything up. We have these arm joints just at the top here, holding on to the arm and bringing those in. And then bring this section up. It doesn't actually tab in, it's just cosmetic to make it look more like it's screen representation. Looking at the top of the figure, we've got these hooks on either side. Uh, these basically need to kind of come out and come out like so. These pieces are going to come up and those are going to come up. Uh, coming around to the hands, uh, these are going to come down like this, forming part of the tread. Uh, it's going to come up. This will come up like so and that will come out. I believe that's correct. The arms then come down. These bits are in, this bit in like so, this comes down and then we can remove the head and that can come down, these up, you can bring in your arm cannons and those are going to sit on top of these shoulders and here we have him fully transformed up into his robot mode. He's not the uh, most balanced figure of all time and I got him perched more than balanced because uh, he's quite back heavy still I don't like how he kind of sits so far back but that being said that is pretty much as screen accurate as we're gonna get I personally think think that looks absolutely sublime the curvature there his posture, just the look and overall feel of him. Probably one of my favorite that Devil Savior have done. It's just something about this guy. He captures a lot more of his screen character than what some of their other variations do. I mean, just look at the head sculpt on this guy. I mean, that's absolutely sublime, isn't it? How menacing. I mean, there's definitely something incredible about Rampage. Love that posture. Now I've had this for a little over a week now, and I've played around with it, chopped and changed it a few more times. And I have always assumed that he is hugely smaller than the Mechanical Alliance version. But, I mean, yes and no. Uh, I folded the tail up on Mechanical Alliance because that's the only way it will really stand. But if you actually do proportions, there's next to nothing in it. I actually a lot bigger and a lot more detailed than I initially gave him credit for. Now you see what I've done here with the gun as well, look, uh, the guns are just stored on the inside of here. So this uh, is, opens up here and the gun comes out and that can be Done like that, look at that. Just love how this looks. Definitely one of my favourite bot modes from Devil Saviour. Now I will just talk you through getting him transformed into his combined form. Uh, 
you have to kind of go back through a lot of the transformation process all the way up to kind of the arms and then we stop so if we start by uh, coming up to these horn crown sections they flip and tuck in like so so as you bring that back that flips backwards on itself and just pushes and tabs in the head it's going to tuck inside and goes away like this these sections come down come down untabs come on out you go whoop and you go whoop and these are gonna square off and square off these panels here come back in and come back in like so and these bits here are going to come back and these are going to come back and then these bits just hook back in sideways this panel rotates up and around and that just tucks down like so and then we can just untab this bit here come on out you come ah there we go got you that's gonna fold and go back into this void and then we can bring these back over and same on this side bring this one back over those are going to just tab in and come up and come up like this now the arms are slightly different because we're doing a little bit more with them now this tab here you see it is an incredibly tight tab but you need to work this one loose yeah even after there we go a few transformations this is still an incredibly stiff tab and you see this joint here move this piece out of the way and this hinge is going to rock at two points and that's going to come in and that's going to line up just like so that's going to shove in like this this is going to come around and this here is going to tuck inwards like so this is this is all in this is in this goes flat this comes over and there's a tab just on the back of here so that will line up and should push and tab in there this will come over this will come around and straighten up as this comes over this comes underneath like this and this smaller piece here comes out to the side so that sits on the side like so and then these panels here actually tabbed in pretty firmly ugh, to these shoulders so let's just move this one again give this a little tug there we go they've now come unlatched from this center piece here and with those unlatched we're going to just work this section away and then making sure that this hook piece here comes unlatched this should now he says easy said than done allow this piece to come up there we go all the way up on that sliding hinge there and then using this tab here these arms are going to rock around oh if i don't if i don't keep unpegging them there we go that's one and you want to do the same with this side bring that around so it tabs in at the back here which keeps it nice and square should tab in at the back here come on in you go in you go and in you go and then there's this latch here that's going to push 
and tab. There we go. Securing that in to this leg section. Lift this section up. This piece here on tabs, this piece here on tabs. And as a result, that allows this piece here to slide. And you've got these brackets here. This is, I think this is die cast. It feels like die cast. These now peg in to their new location. Uh, this is going to tilt backwards. This part here rotates around. Uh, this comes back up. This is going to disengage. And this rotates out. This can then be pushed back in. And this ladder piece can come down. And then this hinge comes up like so. This needs to be kind of a right angle. Come on, in you go. There we go. This is in the way, but this needs to be kind of a this right angle. This needs to be square. And this should come down. And there is this. hinge just underneath, which we should be able to push that in. Oh, these have come out, this has come out. That's in. Again, that's now pulled that nice and taut. Can then come out. This is gonna come back around and this will line up. This will come back around. And this will line up. These latches pull down, and those are going to push and secure. And this top piece then comes down. There's a tab just on the back here and here. Those are going to marry up and push and tab together. And this part here just pushes and folds down. And then we do just have pivot point for our hydraulic pumps. These come up to the side. And this one's gonna come up on that hinge to the side. And with that plugged in, This will untab, this will come up, and you want to bend them over and in, so they sit just here, just above that head. So I'm going to untab this side again. These do not want to stay in on these side panels. It's going to come up, it's going to come down, no, that way, in there like that. Okay. And my final port of action, I've put the cannons on either side and I've just opened up this tab here. To attach this to the rest of the Troublemaker uh, compressor, uh, actually, but uh, open up this tab here, that now allows the compressor's square section to slide in and then we're gonna lock that off. And finally here I have him kind of stood up and with his leg attached, uh, I've had to use one of the brackets, uh, not overly happy about that, but he still definitely looks the part. It's just unfortunately he doesn't have a great deal of surface area and his arms and shoulders are very kind of ape-like because they're really brought forward to the front. If you look in the instructions, uh, the initial design is actually, that's the design I actually want to go for. I better do that until I have his second arm in place. This is the, currently the one I've got. I've got 135 mil, I think. Now I've got the uh, 160 mil here, up at the front with the connector. But this, this way around, we'd use it underneath uh, this part of his jaw. So he's really kind of leaning forward. That's the look I want to go for, but I won't be able to do that really until we get that second arm. But I mean, he is pretty humongous. If I bring in MPM 
prime to give you an idea this thing is a gigantic beast i still need to tweak it it's been placed in storage between getting all of these extra pieces so that once everything's arrived then we can finally have him displayed properly on display and get him into a decent pose and he doesn't necessarily have to look kind of uh, unfinished let's say but there we go that is the review of sweeping yeah, one of my favorites probably one of the easiest and most fluid to transform looks the part in all three modes and I'm very excited to get that final piece. Once that's done, we'll have a, a really nice devastator on our hands. And we'll see how that compares to things like the Studio Series version. Until next time, for myself and the rest of the Collectibles household, thank you all very much for watching. Goodbye.